The Lives of the Saints, by the Reverend Alvin Butler, taken from the 4th edition, published in 1954. May 24th, St. Vincent of Larins. St. Vincent was of Gaulish extraction, had a polite education, was afterwards for some time an officer in the army, and lived with dignity in the world. He informs us in his prologue that, having been some time tossed about in the storms of a bustling military life, he began seriously to consider the dangers with which he was surrounded and the vanity and folly of his pursuits. He desired to take shelter in the harbor of religion, which he calls the safest refuge in the world. His view in this resolution was that he might strenuously labor to divest his soul of its ruffling passions, of pride and vanity, and to offer to God the acceptable sacrifice of a humble and Christian spirit, and that, being further removed from worldly temptations, he might endeavor more easily to avoid not only the wrecks of the present life, but also the burnings of that which is to come. In these dispositions he retired from the crowds of cities and made for the desired haven with all the sail he could. The place he chose for his retirement was in a small remote island sheltered from the noise of the world. This Genadius assures us to have been the more famous monastery of Larins, situated in the lesser of the two agreeable green islands which formerly bore the name of Larins, not far from the coast of Lower Province towards Antibes. In this place he shut himself up that he might attend solely to what God commands us in study to know him. He considered that true faith is necessary to salvation no less than morality, and that the former is the foundation of Christian virtue and he grieved to see the church at that time pestered with numberless heresies, which sucked their poison from their very antidote, the holy scriptures, and which by various wiles spread on every side their dangerous snares. To guard the faithful against the false and perplexing glosses of modern subtle refiners, and to open the eyes of those who had been already seduced by them, he, with great clearness, eloquence, and force of reasoning writ, a book which he entitled A Commonitory Com Against Heretics, which he composed in 434, three years after the general council of Ephesus had condemned the Nestorians. He had chiefly in view the heretics of his own times, especially the Nestorians and Apollinarists, but he confuted them by general, clear principles, which overrun all heresies to the end of the world. Together with the ornaments of eloquence and erudition, the inward beauty of his mind and the brightness of his devotion sparkle in every page of his book. Out of humility he disguises himself under the name of Pere Peregrinus to express the quality of being a pilgrim or stranger on earth, and one by his monastic state in a more particular manner estranged from the world. He styles himself the least of all the servants of God, and less than the least of all the saints, unworthy to bear the holy name of a Christian. He layeth down this rule or a fundamental principle in which he found, by a diligent inquiry, all Catholic pastors and the ancient fathers to agree that such doctrine is truly Catholic, as hath been believed, in all places, at all times, and by all faithful. By this test of universality, antiquity, and constant consent, he saith, all controverted points in belief must be tried. He showeth that whilst Novatian, Photinus, Sabellius, Donatus, Arius, Eunomius, Jovinian, Pelagius, Celestius, and Nestorius expound the divine oracles different ways. To avoid the perplexity of errors, we must interpret the Holy Scriptures by the tradition of the Catholic Church as the clue to conduct us in the truth. For this tradition, derived from the apostles, manifesteth the true meaning of the Holy Scriptures, and all novelty in faith is a certain mark of heresy, and in religion nothing is more to be dreaded than itching ears after new teachers. He saith, they who have made bold with one article of faith will proceed on to others. And what will be the consequence of this reforming of religion, but only that these refiners will never have done till they have reformed it quite away? He elegantly expiates, expatiates on the divine charge given to the church to maintain inviolable the sacred depositum of faith. He takes notice that heretics quote the sacred writings at every word, and that in the works of Paulus Somestanus, Christian, Enomius, Jovinian, and other like priests of Christendom, almost every page is painted and laid on thick with scripture texts, which Tertullian also remarks. But in this, saith St. Vincent, heretics are like those poisoners or quacks who put off their destructive poisons under inscriptions of good drugs and under the title of infallible cures. They imitate the father of lies, who quoted scripture against the Son of God when he tempted him. 
The saint adds that if a doubt arise in interpreting the meaning of the scriptures in any point of faith, we must summon in the Holy Fathers who have lived and died in the faith and communion of the Holy Catholic Church, and by this test we shall prove the false doctrine to be novel. St. Vincent died in the reigns of Theodosius II and Valentinian III, consequently before the close of the year 450. His relics are preserved with respect at Larins, and his name occurs in the Roman Martyrology. St. Vincent observes that souls which have lost the anchorage of the Catholic faith are tossed and shattered with inward storms of clashing thoughts, that by this restless posture of mind they may be made sensible of their danger, and taking down the sails of pride and vanity, which they have unhappily spread before every gust of heresy, they may make all the sail they can into the safe and peaceful harbor of their holy mother, the Catholic Church. And, being sick from a surfeit of errors, may there discharge those fowls and bitter waters to make room for the pure waters of life. There they may unlearn well what they have learned ill, may get a right notion of all those doctrines of the church they are capable of understanding, and believe those that surpass all understanding.